in our third example, I'm looking at this, and at first it doesn't look like it's in the form with a leading coefficient of one. However, it's always smart to put things into the form you need them in or into standard form. So I'm looking at this, and I just need to switch around some of the terms. Standard form would be x squared plus bx plus c. So I want my squared variable first, then 5z minus 36. So I'm looking at this, and I see that I have c is less than 0. So when c is less than 0, p and q have opposite signs. One's going to be positive, one is going to be negative. Okay, remember, figure out the signs, then determine what b and c are. b is equal to 5, and c is equal to negative 36. Okay, and this is going to end up in the form the general form x plus p x minus q, where there's opposite signs for p and q. Okay, I'm remembering my rules that p times q equals c, and here it equals negative 36. And my other rule, p plus q equals b, which equals 5. So now I have to make my list factors of negative 36. Now certainly you, make, you may have to make a fairly long list when you're working with a large number, but there are also ways to make things quicker instead of just going through and writing out every single set of factors. I know that I want their sum to be 5. Therefore, it's not going to be two numbers that are very far apart. For example, if I took 1 and negative 36, they're going to have opposite signs, P and Q have opposite signs, that's going to come out to negative 35. It's, that's too far apart. So I'm going to go for something more towards the middle. We could start with, say, 3 and 12. 3 and negative 12. So if I have 3 and negative 12, 3 times negative 12 is negative 36, and when I find their sum, it's negative 9. And I want to try, if I tried the opposite combination, which I certainly could, I'm going to see that it's 9. This actually gives me another clue, because since I want a positive, I want the sum to be positive, I'm going to have to have the larger number of the two be positive. So that gives me another clue to help me do less work. Okay, so I think, all right, these aren't working. What's some more factors of 36? Well, 4 and 9. And I just said I want a sum that is positive, therefore the larger number will need to be positive. So I'm going to go ahead and try negative 4, 9. And when I add those up, they do add up to 5. So I've found my solution for P and Q, the correct numbers, and I did that by saying they're going to have a sum of 5 and a product of negative 36. That means they're going to have opposite signs. And I didn't spend time doing each factor. I just went for the ones that were reasonably close together so that they would give me a, a fairly, a sum would be a fairly small number, like 5. And I found that negative 4 and 9 did meet that criteria. Okay, so going back and writing this again, I have z squared plus 5z minus 36. And I want to write that in factored form. And I know that my p could be negative 4 and q equals 9, or I could certainly do it the other way. And that will give me x minus 4 times x plus 9. As always, you could check this by multiplying it out or using the FOIL method. So again, find b, find c, find the factors of c, and determine which one has a sum that adds equals b. And then go ahead and put it in your factored form. Use the p and the q to put it in factored form.